one video. If this is the first video you've watched, I absolutely love geology. I mean, it's really cool. Um, I mean, geography is where it's at, but geology is also really fun. So we are out between Cheney and Spokane, Washington. And what you're looking at here is basalt. This is the Fish Lake bike path. That's a long board. That's more basalt. So um, Eastern Washington, which is dominated by basalt, is covered. It's, it's just completely covered in basalt. However, in some areas, that basalt is up to a mile and a half thick. So you don't get to see what used to be there. This spot is interesting because you are looking at the bottom of a basalt flow. Right here there, that layer that goes through there is the forest floor between 12 and 15 million years ago. So this was a very fast moving basalt lava flow. Um, I'm gonna insert some additional info, but you know, if you're a geologist and you know better, please correct me, I'm open to being wrong. But let's look at some of this. I mean, it's fascinating to look at the dirt layer down there. I wish this wasn't there. I would love to go over there. Um, we're going to be looking at a couple of different interesting geological features that you can see out in a place like this because, well, you only have 10 feet of basalt. Now, there's other places, of course, in the state uh, that you can see similar things, um, I would imagine, but this is a pretty cool one. So uh, we're going to head down the way a little bit and uh, check out some interesting geological features. So, one of the reasons that you get to see this here is this, before it was a bike path, I believe it was the Northern Pacific Railroad. That's why you see all the, the poles here. Um, the Northern Pacific, then Burlington Northern, then shut down in the 80s, I think. Um, all of these poles here, they had uh, wires on them um, that if the wire was broken, uh, you'd get a signal, I believe, and that's for avalanche, not avalanches, that's snow. Cavens, rocks coming down. You don't want the rocks on the tracks. Train comes through, train derails. Well, I think I need to walk it here or, or well, I'm gonna die on the ice. Forgive my big ugly shadow, but what you're looking at is a series of ash layers here. The really thick white ash layer is from Mount Mazama, uh, otherwise known as Crater Lake down in Oregon. So uh, that's fairly far. I'll put the exact miles, um, but that was a really big eruption. You can see the ash layer here, well, all throughout this region, but of course it gets covered up with you know, a good amount of topsoil over the years. I don't know what the other layers are here, but um, I'm gonna try to go over there and jump around and climb over here and fill up a little uh, sample jar um, so I can have some Mount Mazama ash in the collection. So I'm gonna chat with you a little bit as I come down here. Um, so imagine for a second a very liquid and fast moving lava flow. Going across a wooded landscape and enveloping the trees. So now you'd probably think that anything would be just burnt up, right? And that is true. But what is required to burn something? Oxygen. So if you have a very liquidy, hot and liquidy lava, kind of like myself, hot and liquidy, hot and squishy. Um, as the lava flows in, 
And of course not in like this because this was blasted out by people. But as the lava flows in and surrounds a tree, let's say, in it's burning, but now it's in an oxygen-free environment. What happens when you take a burnable piece of material, like a tree, and fully envelop it in an oxygen-free environment? You get charcoal. So, out here, along this path, there is, well, at least a 12 million year old carbonized tree that they blasted right through or broke right through. I don't know what they used to get through this. But um, that's really interesting. You know, you'd be able to not fossilized, not petrified, carbonized. Essentially, I mean, if you take a piece of charcoal that's charred in an oxygen free environment, it'll essentially last forever, which that's really fascinating. You know, one of the reasons I'm out here showing you all of this is that I want to convey how cool it can be to get out and uh, experience the geological wonders, which is literally everything. You know, it doesn't all have to be amazing crystals and agates and petrified wood and, and like rare things. Like you can have a great time, an interesting time, going out and looking at basalt. Basalt has a story to tell. You just have to know how to read it. This right here, is a 10 to 15 million year old piece of wood, carbonized. I'm gonna grab some, put this in the specimen jar. I see a bigger piece here, which is pretty cool. Gotta try to get across now without getting wet. Check that out. Pretty cool, eh? Feels like a piece of wood. Looks like a piece of wood, but it's not petrified. And uh, I'll get all the loose stuff off of this and have a jar of that. And uh, yeah, it's pretty fascinating. So just imagine for a second, forest floor, 15 something, 12 million years ago, I have no idea when, but about then. You have a tree here going up. Maybe a little piece branching off there. Lava comes in, surrounds it quickly. It burns, well, turns into carbon, turns into coal, or not coal, um, like charcoal. It's a charred material um, and Fast forward millions of years, railroad comes through here, exposes it. If you go back a couple of videos, that video, uh, I was out here with Sarah and the dog, sun was setting, and we came across some gothite. So, uh, how do I know it was that? I don't really know it was that. But I do have a PDF file from the 60s where a geologist said it was that at this spot. There's some online resources that say it's this at that spot. Um, but upon sharing the image of the rocks of some people, I was told that that is in fact siderite. So you have conflicting sources. So what's happening there? What's happening is maybe 60 years ago, a geologist saw something and was like, it's this. And then 45 years ago, it got put in a book and on and on. And this misinformation keeps getting repeated. So uh, I don't want to participate in that. I want to share good, interesting, accurate information with y'all. Um, so yeah, it could be either one, who knows? But let's uh, look, for, look for some more here. So this stuff is all over here, like right there in that pocket. Is Ash going to show up? Maybe it'll show up. That's a nice one. Little pockets all over it. 
it's literally everywhere. Um, you know, you're hard pressed to uh, look down at uh, a piece of basalt with a little hole on it and not find some. So uh, I'm going to try to put together a decent little selection and show you what I come up with here. These are the four that we'll be taking. We've got a couple of decent pockets on those. That, that one's kind of cool as is. That's a really nice pocket there on that one. That one's got a pretty deep little cave of gothite, siderite, all over. Depends what you, what you want to call it. Um, so yeah, uh, I think I'll put the two small ones in the backpack and I'll just uh, carry the other two because we got, oh, a mile. Maybe less than a mile. That's Fish Lake there. Let's start with uh, checking out the wood that we got. Man, that's so cool. That uh, looks like a burnt piece of wood. Feels like wood. Wow. I want to get much of these bigger pieces out and uh, then I can put them in a, a more proper sample jar. Maybe ditch the little pieces. Looks pretty neat. I'll uh, put a photo photo in there. But um, yeah, it's cool to find neat, interesting things like this. Maybe I'll pick through that through and uh, do some of the slightly bigger ones. Dang, that traffic outside sure is loud. Let's try to reduce some of the overall uh, basalt here and focus on some of these pockets. Um, I could cut it with my saw, but I would actually prefer this to kind of have that rough natural shape. So we're going to be uh, going out and uh, hitting it with a chisel some. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, this stuff's kind of cool. I like it. I, I got rid of some of the dead basalt weight. Um, there's some interesting pockets in here, as you saw in the in the photos. Um, if you would like this material, I believe these five rocks will fit in a medium flat rate box, USPS, medium flat rate box. Um, if you want that, and uh, or if you want these, and you're willing to pay for the shipping, I'll mail them to you. Uh, the, the first person that says that um, they want, want these, and you live in the continental United States of America, I'll mail these out to you. So just leave that comment down below, and this uh, basalt with go, go light, go, go tight, go, whatever, siderite, go light, whatever you want to <laughs> refer to it as. It's yours. Um, thanks for watching this whole video. I know it's probably a long one, uh, but I try to keep it interesting, you know? So please hit that subscribe button if you like this type of content and uh, you want to see more of it. Thanks for watching.